Liverpool. Give it up for the Lord of the Rings cast! I was toying with the idea of a big elaborate in, in, introduction and doing it all and Sean just goes, let's walk on together, it's gangster. And I was like, it is gangster. Yeah. It is gangster. You guys, this is iconic to say the least. How are you doing? Good. Good, yeah. I'm feeling I'm very like iconic in the moment. Front row there. There's a baby in the front row. <laughs> um, we're obviously here to talk about Lord of the Rings. We're going to take questions from the audience. Jermaine is out there somewhere with a microphone. He, you're gonna, he's going to find you. He's going to give you. He's oh, there. hello, he's, Jermaine. You, Jermaine. Jermaine will select you, and he will pick the question. Is that okay? And if you got, you're already standing up. It's fine. Um, how are you finding Liverpool this weekend? You had a good weekend. It's been great. Great. Liverpudlian. Fantastic, Fantastic meals. I didn't know the Beatles are from here. <laughs> that, that was a good thing to know. No way. Yeah. Well, from one Fab Four to another, and Lego Lass. Yeah, yeah. I haven't had that in my head for weeks. <laughs> wow. Uh, you're enjoying the city and you're seeing the sights, and I hope these guys have been good to you. Yeah, it's been great. I took a walk around the city this morning, actually. I was up with jet lag at like five in the morning, so I just strolled out down to the uh, museum on the docks. It was beautiful. You're not implying that he's Yoko, are you? <laughs> no. I think he's more kind of Brian Epstein, isn't he? Yeah, he's George, the whole George Martin. George Martin. George Martin, oh, lovely. Yeah. yeah, very classic. Yeah. You guys make a mess, he sorts it out. That seems to be that seems to be the thing. We're gonna just make it out. <laughs> we're gonna dive straight into audience questions first and then um, we're at number one and then I will jump in, in between if that's okay with you guys. <laughs> Question one. Hello. Hello. Very high, so it's not you know for hobbits. Oh. Um, so, I just want to say thank you for being here. Um, really, we're all really, really grateful that you all made it here. And my question is, what is your most favourite line from the trilogy? Mine is salted pork. <laughs> I'll go first. Shall I get you a box? <laughs> one that uh, Gandalf does to Frodo about, you know, it is, it is not our job to decide, you know, what, I can't remember. What to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any lines in that movie? Yeah, you get the idea. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah uh, they're taking the hobbits to Isengard. <laughs> <laughs> And you have my bow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. What's so funny is when we were talking about you guys coming over here, we went, yeah, they're taking the Hobbit to oh. the Heisenberg, yeah, I suppose, yeah. The Paul one. Um, where's the next question, number two? There's number two over there. Hello, number two. How are you doing? You okay? Um, oh, question is for Elijah. Um, your last shot in Return of the King is, um, I forget the line now. Um, not quite this room for a little more. What's the juxtaposition of your character saying goodbye to Middle Earth against Peter Jackson, who wasn't really ready to let go of Middle Earth? Can you talk about filming that shot? That's so interesting. That's a really good question. Um, I remember filming that, so that little bit of essentially finishing his part in the book in, in Bag End. And it was the last shot that I filmed in the entire, because we would go back every film, I'm, I'm sure all of you know this, but we would go back every year for additional filming for each film uh, and do pickups. And, and so that was the last bit I, I ever shot. It was really emotional because it was so symbolic of the end of Frodo's journey and handing that over to Sam. The legacy of it, the, the you know, essentially, it's your adventure to take now. It's your story to write. Um, all of the weight of that, you know, 
and it was deeply emotional. Uh, Peter, Fran, and Philippa were sat behind the monitor, all of them crying. Uh, you know, it certainly informed on the, the sort of performance for me and underlying. I mean, obviously, it's an emotional moment for Frodo, but but in a different way, not in a sort of overt way. Um, so yeah, it was it, it was heavy. Um, but the the sort of what you're saying, that juxtaposition of, of, of the end of Frodo's to sort of Pete, Pete's then journey going forward, I don't think he quite knew in that moment <laughs> that he would be carrying on, uh, certainly not to, to Middle Earth again and, and to taking on The Hobbit, because that, we asked him while we were shooting rings whether he wanted to make The Hobbit and he wanted nothing to do with it. it wasn't, he wasn't interested in The Hobbit, and that kind of came later. Um, but it was an incredible moment and, and very powerful. Powerful way to end. Thank you very Can much. Can I ask a question? Elijah, mm -hmm. do we know what the very last thing that was filmed for Lord of the Rings was? I don't know, actually. No, Sean, do you know? Does somebody know? No? We don't I, know who I was. We don't know what was the last. No? I suspect it would have been, yeah. It'll be like technical, like. But like last miniature. cast who was out, we don't, do we know? Who don't know. There has to be a last cast moment. I don't know what that is. Anyone knows here? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Like, someone has known. I said, like, oh, I wonder where I can find you know? super fans. Was it not um, Gollum's reaction to learning Frodo was going to destroy the ring, and it was shot at Peter Jackson's house just before the awards, because it was very, very late pickup? Oh, that's oh. very yeah, awesome. That well done. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I think we're going to take the next question from number four at the back over there. Um, we're doing it like a clockwise type of thing. <laughs> we should probably make three, four then. <laughs> Can you swap those numbers? No, Dom has OCD. It's really firing right now. <laughs> you can't go two, four, three. <laughs> Most fun to film, is that right? There was there was a scene there was a scene that really made me laugh a lot and it was because of something that Orlando said. There's a scene where um, Legolas tells Mary and Pippin about Lembas bread. <laughs> <laughs> How it's so good for giving you energy and two small bites will, you know, fill a, a grown man for a week kind of thing. And we were doing the scene and everything was fine. We'd set it up and then we'd stopped as they were moving a light or something. And Orlando said to me, came over to me and Dom and said, I, I don't know how to do this because when I'm doing it, it just feels like I'm doing an advert. <laughs> <laughs> For Lemba spread. And after that, every time he tried to say it, I could just see him in a TV doing an advert. <laughs> it really did feel like that. It felt like giving an advert. Like, and that was my first... My first time, at, right? Was it? Really? Yeah. Was like, that, and we're sitting in that. No, that was my first movie, so I was really like, I was like, wait, this just feels like. And it was quite, quite a week because well, you had to walk over and just yeah. basically say that, you know, and we're just looking at you. I remember that. <laughs> we had our own experience with Lemba Spread. That, um, Andrew Jack, the late um, wonderful dialect coach that we had, one of our two dialect coaches, he kept saying to me that I had to elongate the vowels. Elongate, so I said the lamba spread. He said, no, 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 elongate lamba spread. The lamba spread, the la, the lamba spread. He's like, well, elongate the vowel. I, 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 I just fresh out the lamba spread. The lamba spread. We all, we had the, the daily, the rushes, you know, when you see the previous day's work and it was at night and the whole cast was gathered around and I'm sitting next to Elijah, right? And, and it comes on and it's a nice big fat close up, you know, and big as the whole show, the love, my friend. Is that the I get stuck, I get, st you know, potato, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> That's a nice shiny apple. <laughs> that, that was the line that they, they, 
I couldn't quite do the accent the way they wanted us to do it. I'm just, you know, slow or something. And and he, he Andrew got a tape of a of a West Country farmer. So well, that's a nice shiny apple. <laughs> Before every line of dialogue I ever did in the entire movie, I said, that's a nice shiny apple. <laughs> We've got another question. I do apologise, we're going to number three. <laughs> Whoever's at number three, can they have a question for Dom? Just to... Yeah, it's been your daughter's uh, eighth birthday today, Harper. She's sitting uh, two seats from the back. Uh, you, she's been lucky enough to uh, meet you all. And um, yeah, she didn't want to party with her friends. She wanted a Lord of the Wings, uh, Lord of the Rings weekend. Good taste. So, I was just wondering if you could you all give her a happy birthday song card. Oh, is it Harper, you said? Yeah. Oh, are you ready, guys? Three, two, one. Well, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Harper. Happy birthday to you. Could you tell I long in the bowels? It's actually my birthday as well today. I didn't have to do for a song. It's actually John Rhys Davies' birthday today as well, apparently. It is, yeah. Happy birthday. All the best people. Um, number one, hello. Hi, guys. Um, thank you so much for coming. It's been wonderful to meet all of you this weekend. Um, Elijah, sorry I went silent on you. Nerves, horrible things. Anyway, question. Um, were there any decisions that your character made throughout the course of the trilogy that you didn't agree with? And if so, what would it be? Is this for all of us? Yeah. All Taking of the you. hobbits to eyes and gone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've got one that is, is like slightly to your point, but just a little adapted, which always slightly frustrated me. It, in the books, when Gandalf is struggling to get into, to open the doors to Moria, it's Mary that solves the riddle for him. <laughs> and, I was, and I was on set, a 24 year old young man, and Pete and Fran are very smart, very shrewd people. And Fran could always make me do anything because Fran's just a beautiful elven princess. And she came over to me and put my arm around me and said, Dom, we're thinking of giving that moment to Frodo. And I just went, oh. <laughs> Why? And Fran said, well, we're trying to establish this stronger connection between Fr Frodo and Gandalf before there's kind of a break between everyone and, and it's important to just try and have those connections. We'll find something else for you. And oh, you can't say, you're not in a position to say yes or no anyway, but I remember thinking, I don't have a lot to do in these films. <laughs> Elijah has quite a bit more. <laughs> so I didn't really agree with that. <laughs> I've got, I've got one. So, you know that there were many uh, units. First unit, second unit, A unit, B unit, a, a helicopter unit, the insert unit, the this, you know, scale double unit. So, um, sometimes Fran and Philippa would direct stuff. And there was, we were doing the, uh, the Kirith Ungol uh, scene. And Sam had, was uh, a reluctant ring bearer when he thinks Frodo's killed by you know, Shelob, and he takes it, he's gonna pick up the mission, and then when he realizes he's not dead, he goes swashbuckling all the way up and kills Shagrat or Shag or whatever, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, then Frodo wakes up and is like, give me the effing ring now, you know? And uh, I'm like, okay, well, they wanted me to uh, have a moment where I didn't want to give it to him because maybe I wanted it for myself. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Uh, Sam wouldn't know. And Sam's like, so your job as an actor is to do what they tell you to do, you know? But you try and reconcile it with what you want to do. So if you look at that scene, I was having a bad wig day. 
my wig is like kind of stuck up in the back. It looks really stupid. And uh, and I do this thing where, uh, you know, I, I, I pull it away for just a second. And what I was thinking to myself in that moment is, oh, I don't want to give it to him because it's going to hurt him. And if it plays to them like maybe he's Sam's hesitating for himself, then I fooled them. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone want to ask me? Anyone want to ask me a question? Because I've got to leave now. I'm so sorry. I've got a flight to catch, unfortunately, so I'll be out. But I... who is your favourite Hobbit? <laughs> <laughs> all four of you, all together at the same time. <laughs> Can I ask a question? You, can ask me you said it was your first film, and then Dominic alluded to reading the book and finding out, obviously, his character was things. Did you read the book in advance? Did you know what was coming for Legolas? And how did you prepare? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a mate. You all right? Um, yes, I had read the books in advance. Um, I'd actually read The Hobbit years before, but then I obviously read Lord of the Rings. I think for everyone, it was like a bit of a Bible. I think Ian always said that. And it was like, we would always refer to our characters from the book. And back then, there wasn't emails. I used to send faxes to Pete and Fran saying, <laughs> Well, I think Legolas brings this news about Gollum when he comes to Rivendell, and that's a really important piece of information, you know, because that's the whole sort of, and it's like, equally to you, you know, similar to you. I think we all had, you know, lots of ideas that we were attached to <clears throat> that we had to obviously let go of at different times just to serve the film, which I think, you know, obviously worked out really well for the film <laughs> and, and actually for all of us in turn. But it was, um, yeah, it was... Um, there was just, yeah, it was a, I think you couldn't, you couldn't not have the book sort of inscribed in you. And I think there was a huge sense of responsibility that we all felt to bring these characters alive, you know. And uh, it was certainly as my first role, it was like, wow, this has felt like a lot of responsibility. But also, you know, we were super supported by, by, um, by the production, by Pete and Fran and everyone, you know, lots of movement training, lots of dialect. I mean, wasn't... I think I was the first to get there, actually. I was like there, and then you guys came in, right? And I was like there for three months, and I was like, just kind of being taken to horse riding classes, and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> and uh, archery and stuff like that. But then, and then you guys came in. We flew together, that's a lie, we flew together. Yeah, and a plane. We flew together. <laughs> we flew together, we saw each other in the airport, and it was really funny, because it was his birthday, and uh, we had a glass of champagne that was free, I think, right? <laughs> Something like that. We were flying business, maybe? Mm -hmm. Were we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Possibly. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah, but it was, it was so funny. What was the first thing you said to me? I think you came over and said, you look like an elf. Yeah, I did. <laughs> right. Which is really weird because you wouldn't have known what I looked like, right? No, I didn't. No. You just said you're, you're fine with someone uh, Orlando Bloom and he's playing the elf Legolas and I was going down to get some money changed into New Zealand money you know in the little hut that they have in, a, in, in an airport and I saw this guy and I was like you know it looks like an elf <laughs> and I thought, I thought I'm going to ask him I said, you're not Orlando Bloom <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then it was your birthday and we had a nice and then we learnt the poem if you remember, on the flight, because obviously it's like 30 hours to get there. And we, we learned, we, we tested each other on one ring to rule the ball. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we both had the book, obviously, and I was like, okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I have to say, that was so magical, wasn't it? Arriving in that country. Oh, it was good. Do you remember when we arrived as well? They gave us the script in a leather bound yeah. with your name on it. It was just, it felt like so special, didn't it? Yeah, there was so much. That was it's very magical about the whole period. Anyway, um, I just want to say thank you all very much for having me. I haven't done many Comic Cons, but you've been amazing. It's been so nice to say hello and hi and take photos and sign things. And I hope you've all had a great one. And I'm sorry I have to dash off. And as for you lot, on your bike. <laughs>
Who was that? <laughs> he was lovely, wasn't he? Who was that? He smelled lovely, didn't he? Uh, you were your friends? Um, I feel like this is where the trouble's gonna start now. <laughs> George Martin's exited the picture, and it's just, it's just a fat ball. It feels like the teacher's left, doesn't it? it, does, it feels like, <laughs> just, I feel like there's mischief in the air. Um, you alluded to going to New Zealand together on the plane and meeting there. You guys, I mean, you're a brotherhood. You are family. It's been 25 years this year since you started filming. You were in New Zealand for about two years? 16, what is it? 16 to 18 months of principal photography. Yeah. And somehow you're still all really good friends. Which is fantastic. I mean, we're family. You know, it, it is, it, is it more it, than that? Yeah. It transcends friendship. Um, I think one of y'all said it, it, it's unconditional. It's like we, we, we've seen each other through so many different phases of each other's lives in 25 years, you know? You've got like kids now, what's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah that's, that's what happens when you have friendships for this long. I said this at the last convention, I think, is you obviously see all colours of those humans and you accept them all because you love all parts of them. You love the good and the bad because you're like, well, I just want to know you in, in however way you show up. You know? That's really, for me at least, that's what it means to be a friend is like, when it's good, I'm still your friend. And when it's bad, I'm still your friend. You know, that's how it works. Yeah. I feel like um, there's a lesson in it for people. Um, you know, the big curiosity whenever we would go anywhere right after the films came out was, you know, is it true? Is it real? Are you really friends? Do you really like it? Are you really like your character? You know, the, the fantasy was so wonderful that people wanted to confirm it, that it's actually real. And uh, when, you, when you are part of a project that you're proud of and you're, it's important, you go into it and there's an expectation that you're gonna, you know, as a professional, you're gonna have a good relationship. And I suppose sometimes maybe it doesn't work out like that, but when you go into it with that intention, it's worse, you know, human beings are pretty powerful. We, we set our intention right at the beginning and it hasn't changed. And did you spend a lot of time together before the shoot, like rehearsing, like Orlando would have gone to horse riding school, you guys would have learned to smoke pipe weed? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So a lot of those movies you're just smoking and eating. Yeah. Like some of my friends are like that, but we, you know. No, we did, like, like Billy said, he flew in with Orlando. I think I was the last out of the gang to get here because I was, I was finishing off a job, but very quickly we jumped into full days of script rehearsals, dialect training, horse riding, sword fighting, kayaking. What else will we do? Wardrobe fittings. Co what, costume fittings, makeup tests, putting the feet on, putting the ears on, walking around, scale double rehearsals. It was a full, I thought I was gonna get there because I knew that it was a ways off, probably at least five or six weeks off before we started principal photography. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be great. I'm just gonna be in New Zealand for a month and a half hanging out. But every single day apart from Sunday was spoken for, wasn't it? Yeah, we got there in August. We didn't shoot till October. Wow. Yeah. And when we got off we were, the working all the time, you know, prepping. When we got off the plane, there was this urgency. Oh, you gotta get right to Weta. They're gonna have a thing. Oh, they're gonna show you this thing. And, they, and I remember a lot of times thinking like, when did they plot it out? And we, we did so much canoe training, and I don't think I was ever in a canoe. <laughs> If you would have been in a canoe, if you would have been in a canoe, you were ready. I was, yeah. If they ever needed me in a canoe, everything in a canoe. Yeah. Also, it was brilliant because I think was it was Sean Bean in the same canoe as Orlando? Orlando? No, no uh, that was John it was John Rhys Davies. Davies. But at one point, he was... Orlando kept flipping it over, and John's like, "Oh my God!" You know, <laughs> there was there was something happened with Orlando and. Sean with the kayaks because they got in some sort of spat where I think one of them was at, I think Sean because Sean can be quite fun and silly I think Sean was kind of splashing in Orlando and then it kicked yeah. off with it and just watching those two having a fight was kind of fun <laughs> it is quite fun but the idea of Sean Bean being fun and silly is something that oh, Sean Bean's hilarious man. Sean Bean is hilarious he's just very droll very Yorkshire you know what I mean so it always comes out but he's very funny very funny
We had a we we uh, we met him at the same time, right? We, uh, we met Sean at the same time. Sean Bean. Yeah. Did we? Yeah. We were, we were playing. We were in Queenstown, and you and I were playing 007. Oh yeah. Video game, oh, which yeah. was very realistic <laughs> violence, and Gold he, Knight, and, obviously. And, and, Lyra, and he played 006. That's right. And so we were. We had the door open to the dressing room that we're sitting in. We're playing, and I can't remember who was who, but but 006 comes on the screen and boom bullet shot, right? He drops, and then he walks by. We're like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> also, we should say, because this might be quite fun for, for the crowd here, we went out for dinner last night, and we were trying to teach Elijah to do a Scouse accent. <laughs> <laughs> Just give us a little... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken and a can of coke. Where? Where? Yeah. Where? Where? Uh, as a scouser, I, I, I am honoured that you can do our accents. <laughs> we had a couple of drinks last night, but his accent last night was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting in about eight gear. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm talking to La today. Because oh, yeah. I really like that in Liverpool, the whole, oh, see you later, La. Yeah. How are you doing, La? <laughs> so I was teaching those guys. Pretty yeah. friendly city, aren't we? we welcome, Very friendly. We welcome everyone Very to our city. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, number two, girl, you got any chicken? No? <laughs> what, what question are we on? I, I'm really sorry, I'm effing nervous, sorry. Um, my name is Evie, I'm from the Netherlands, and my question is, uh, what is the weirdest or funniest thing ever happened to you, like on a premiere or like with fans, uh, kind of things? <laughs> It's not so weird, but kind of extraordinary that that's not really what you're asking, so... Uh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. But the premiere, yeah, the premiere for Return of the King in New Zealand was a parade, and I have never in my fucking life experienced <laughs> a city-wide parade for the film, where he, it, was, it was like a, the event of the city. And people were on top of buildings and out of out of windows, getting a you know a view of this parade. And we came down Courtney Place in in vintage cars, and it was. But some of the stats, I think, it, I think it was something like ten percent of the country were, were there, premier, <laughs> which is not including sheep. <laughs> yeah, the sheep had a day off. We, we went to Japan. Uh, which is an amazing country, beautiful, beautiful people. But sometimes when you do these TV shows, like if you're doing like, you know, the one show or something like that, they might, they might ask you to do a couple of little throws to what's going on. So they might say, hey, could you just say, hey, I'm doing the one show later on, you know, tune in, or I'm here with Billy Boyd, we're doing the one show, we look forward to seeing it. And the three of us, if not the four of us, did a show called Poo. <laughs> in do you remember? And we had to do all these throws of like, hi, I'm Elijah Wood, and you're on poo. <laughs> that was a bit weird. And we're all chill. That was a bit weird. <clears throat> I'm remembering now. The, it was, Japan, it was, Japan is amazing. The TV shows were a gas. Oh my god. It's so funny. They're deadly. You know, so, you know what's going to happen. They're like, you know, like, oh, and the guy next to you just got an arrow in the chest. Okay, now it's. <laughs> don't, I hope the light doesn't come on me now. <laughs> like, when in the, uh, the Wellington thing, they had a huge airplane painted with all of us on the side of the airplane, and it did a flyover of where we were filming. Yeah. And, and uh, if you ever watch the um, American, when the American president is elected, and they, uh, they, they, the motorcade is coming down from where they take the oath of office, and then the president always makes a spontaneous stop of the vehicles and gets out to show they're a man of the people, you know, and they, they walk through. We, that's what we did, and, the, and there was more red carpet. It was like a, a, a half a mile of red carpet to walk on. You're like, it, we, you were walking forever, right? Yeah, that's gotta be up there on the strange meter. That's the biggest <laughs> one, yeah. <laughs> so when you did the press tour, obviously you guys would have been everywhere all over the world and you would have done that together as well um, I spoke to Brad Dourif last year he said he was partnered up with Christopher Lee and they did their press events together were you guys together but I also there's a famous <laughs> in interviews did we did we get paired sometimes we got paired yeah yeah we get paired 
Yeah, well, it's one time I was with sure Christopher it. Lee, and I've no idea why. <laughs> that, that sort of is where, where I'm le leading. The question is, because Christopher Lee was, like, allegedly the inspiration for James Bond. He was in World War, he, like, yeah. killed dudes, and, yeah. I was going to say, have you got stories about Christopher Lee and what we're, like, working with him? Because Brad Dourif said he <laughs> greeted every um, different nationality in their own their language. language. Yes. Yes, he spoke multiple languages. That's right. Elijah and I watched him, we were, we were on set one time, and Elijah and I watched him. He took a big pen, you know, like a biro, and he threw it at the tree, and it stuck in the tree like a knight. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he and I sat next to each other on a flight from uh, Auckland back to Los Angeles. Oh boy. Well, you know, you're with a, he's an older man, you know, and I, I, I'm a talker, so I was like, well, I'm just gonna be, it's true, I know. <laughs> I accept myself for who I am. And I, and I, but I just thought, I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna give him his space or sleep or whatever. He turned like this, and I turned like this, and we didn't, it was 10 hours of non-stop talking between the two of us. And then when we went to, another time we went to Paris, and he brought me to his to a club on the Champs Elysees. He had one of these gentlemen's club sounds like strippers, but it was a <laughs> it was, it was a, a club for gentlemen. Yeah, <laughs> gentlemen. They know. They know. Yeah, it's like something out of Golden, you know, like out of Bond, James Bond. <coughs> and we went in there, and it was like he made a big. It was it was a thing that he brought me into this club, and we stood out. And he's like, "This is where we stood, like when the war was over." You know, what? yeah, yeah, it was pretty, you know, when the parade happens, when they, when they, when they, yeah, so it was. Do you remember in Paris as well, I, I think it was like a Dior or something, there was a store, or like an expensive, fashionable store, and his wife had went into the store, and there was a, one wall was like wallpaper of a, an old picture, black and white photograph of an, a model, you know, beautiful young woman. And she says, do you know who that is? And they said, no, we've, been, we've looked for years and we don't know who it is. And she says, it's me. <laughs> and it was Christopher it's, Lee. It was White. Gita. Wow. Isn't that brilliant? He, he also uh, smoked cigars. And he invited me at one point, like, to, you know, Smoking. like a mentor. Yeah, come have a cigar. And the two of us sat on Stone Street and smoked a cigar together. It was freaking rad. <laughs> Yeah, he was, he was amazing. He was, he was lovely. You got to obviously work with some incredible actors, and obviously he's, he was one of them. Um, your story about the pen, I had the same thing, but he threw a nail into a dartboard and got a bullseye from across the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that dude was... He would have done poorly at an autograph signing show, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> he can do a lot. Yeah, albums like made heavy metal albums Did as they, well. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you guys have seen in the, in the DVD extras his farewell speech where he's almost in tears and he's... He's saying to all of us, we were all there, like, and obviously he's addressing people than anyone else, but he's saying, like, in my entire career, I've never done anything this great, and you guys have done something extraordinary, and I'll always remember this. And he was very moved by it, and that's, that's Christopher Lee. I mean, what? Don't judge me. <laughs> but <laughs> on my TikTok, I just watched that. Did you? Yeah. I know that my, my TikTok's been hijacked by Lord of the Rings behind the scenes stuff, and I, I'm seeing things I never saw before. <laughs> the algorithm has learned that I'm really interested in myself. <laughs> I think it's just dances. I learned all those dances, TikTok yeah, dances. Yeah. I love hey, them. Hey, oh, yeah, 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 Billy was trying to teach us a Korean dance, but yeah. we never got around to it today. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you to that. I might ask you. Oh, you want to uh, do it? No, okay, okay, okay. Num uh, we're going to go and take a question from number four. Sorry. Uh, hi, my name's Danny. Um, I'm going to apologise to Elijah in advance for this question. So I'm doing this on behalf of a friend. And the question is... You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I actually think it's quite a funny question. All right, it doesn't help that I'm a chef, so I've added to it. So apologies again. When orcs say meat is back on the menu, that, does that imply that they know of the existence of uh, restaurants in um, Mordor? <laughs> and if so, how do they eat said meat? Do they marinate it or do they like to just barbecue it? I know. Apologies. This is, the, this is the thing that happens in modern writing for old times. 
It happens a lot. In the, the in Star Wars, the um, uh, Last Jedi, there's a whole like I'll, um, when he's talking to General Hux, and he's like, uh, hold for for General Hux, like it's a fucking telephone call. <laughs> I'm sorry, like let me put you patch you in. What are you fucking talking about? It's on a phone. <laughs> so the same thing, like he meets back on the menu. What menu are they talking about? <laughs> it's definitely, it's a it's a it's that thing where you just take liberty because it's a fun joke, you know. What, it's a good bit of writing. Doesn't and help it, and it he cosplays as Luke Skywalker, so that's just made it even. Funnier. What's that? He cosplays as Luke Skywalker, so you've just made that even. Oh well, funnier. perfect. That tied it all together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you buried the lead on that question when he says "sweet meat." <laughs> is that the one you're talking about? There is a there is a sweet meat, but I think it's a different. It's a different character. Whatever, but it's the same people. general reference. <laughs> it's the Here, same. It's sweet. That, she's implying a, the notion of a restaurant with, with the... I think, the you're, I think you're conveniently skipping over what's being served. Yeah. Us. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it's us. Sweet meat. Sweet meat. <laughs> Number three at the back. No more culinary questions, please. <laughs> no, it's, uh, hi, first of all, thank you for bringing us Lord of the Rings, greatest movie series of all time. But uh, my question is for Billy and Dom. After the Battle of Isengard, one of the most iconic scenes of when you're both smoking long bottom leaf after the, after the battle, what character could you spawn in with you to share that with you and why? You mean a character from the Lord of the Rings world? Yeah, a character from Lord of the Rings, book, series, or movie. Well, I mean, like, the, the easy answer for someone to be sat enjoying pipe weed with would probably be Gandalf the Grey, right? I mean, he's fond of it. He's fond of it. We, and, and just to slightly digress on your question, Pete had actually said to Billy and I when we were doing that scene, let's, let's do a few different passes of this. Let's do it tired, let's do it excited, let's do it drunk, let's do it inebriated on pipe weed, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> the kids in the audience. But what, what do you think? You don't I mean do it as you though, know. you mean do it. Uh, you wanted us yeah, to act. I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, Tom, Tom Bombadil. Oh, Tom Bombadil would be great. Be fantastic. Sit and smoke a pipe with him. That'd be fantastic. Smoke it all himself. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It'd be like a ten hour flight with Christopher Lee. <laughs> He'd tell you some stuff. I'm buying a blink. I love Tom Bombadil. <laughs> Before we move on to the next question, obviously we've not really spoke about Peter Jackson, um, who at the time was primarily known for horror films and um, like, like heavenly creatures like a New Zealand drama, and then to give him the keys to the biggest fantasy franchise in existence and to make three films consecutively at once was possibly a bit of a surprise. Um, what was your relationship like with Peter? How was it working with such a, an incredible filmmaker and a, gift, a gifted man? I remember being really thrilled when I heard that he was directing it, actually. I was a big fan of, of his work, uh, primarily Heavenly Creatures and The Frighteners. Um, and it weirdly made a lot of sense to me, especially Heavenly Creatures, which is a kind of, it has fantastical elements as it pertains to their dream world that they create for each other. And it's also rooted in real human drama, these, these, these characters that are going through a pretty heinous thing in their deep relationship and then ultimately this murder that they carry out together. Um, I love that film so much. So I was just, yeah, I was thrilled to, to work with him and, and to um, and to go down to New Zealand and I'd heard tell of the sort of world that he'd created down there with Weta and the effects company and the kind of things that they were creating and it sounded sound thrilling and exciting. You know. So my father, John Astin, the original Gomez Adams from the Adams family, he played a character called the Judge in Frighteners and he had his bone, the jawbone sticking out, and you know he had been dead for a long time, and he had a bloodhound that had been dead for a long time, and he he came to um, my little Chris, my wife and I had a little house, two bedroom house in the valley, in Los Angeles, Sherman Oaks, and he and my stepmom came over with pictures, 
of his experience with Weta. And he showed the entire mold process and he basically introduced us in the pictures to uh, Richard and, and Tanya and the, he just described this, this filmmaking experience, this fantasy world that was, you know, like from a, another, another time, another world. I mean, and it made it so, I was so envious of him when he described it. And then when we got the movie, and when I got the movie, you know, I was like, I'm gonna get to go and do what my dad did. And then when we got down there, Peter has what they call him the military command presence. He just is very confident and he inspires confidence in everyone who's around him. And he's, he's, he's either always prepared or he can fake it better than anybody I've ever met. And, uh, and you just sort of, it doesn't seem like such a big thing that they handed over the keys to this big thing to him. And they would have m been missing out if they didn't do it. He presented a huge opportunity for them. And that you only had to look at for two seconds that the concept design work and the, the little bits of uh, video, you know, or whatever, like uh, computer simulations they did. And it's, you know, so yeah. That sounds like, are you guys the same? Yeah, totally. I think he's like, um, you know, people throw the, the word genius around, but it, I think he is a filmmaking genius, you know? And I think his whole life had led up to that. Like, he was making masks on himself to learn mask making, you know, when he was younger. So years and years of learning all these skills that you felt like he could go into anyone's job on set and do it perfectly, you know? So he, he was absolutely the perfect guy to do it. Weirdly, he went on to do the Beatles movie as well, didn't he? That's really strange. And they're from here. <laughs> we have got three minutes and 40 seconds left. I have been talking your ear for nearly 45 minutes, guys. I, I appreciate your time, and I know they appreciate your time. We've got time for one last question, and I'm going to let you pick it. Yeah. Pick, yeah, go. What, where were we? Where were we last? So sorry. Three was the last one. We were at three last. I'm getting a lot of people saying that the number one one should go. So we'll give it. We'll give it to the number one. Sorry, two, four, three. Um, hi. Thank you for that. Um, so you mentioned in TikTok before, and this is just a funny question to kind of end the afternoon. Um, I don't know if you remember Dom and Elijah. You did an interview about 20 years ago. Well, um, I Never forget. Yeah. I think I remember. Um, and I kind of just wanted to ask if there are any updates to the following questions. Uh, do you wear wigs? <laughs> or will you wear wigs? And when will you wear wigs? I do. I have. I certainly will again. <laughs> and as to when or where? It was when, I think. When? Yeah. When will I wear wigs? <laughs> uh, there is, there's actually a movie called The Toxic Avenger that's a remake of a trauma film that'll come out sometime later this year, hopefully. I wear a wig in that. <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny about that thing, though? And, and, it, and I'm sure it's funny about some of our other experiences in, in Lord of the Rings. Certainly for me, with that particular thing that went on, you, you can never tell ever what's going to ca catch fire. If someone were to say to me, you know, in that Lord of the Rings experience, what are going to be the moments that are going to stand out? I might say, oh, this and that. I would have never said, oh, this silly little interview that I did with Elijah is, is going to have some sort of abiding legacy. But Billy is on TikTok all the time, and I know Sean as well. Constantly, Billy will be like, that wig thing is on again. It's on again. We're on the same TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? We know we never think about this. Hans Jensen should have his own interview show. You know, I pitched it to Pete. Did you? Because <laughs> Pete loved it so much, and I was like, why don't you, knowing that it's Hans Jensen, why don't you let me interview you as Hans? And Pete was like, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> it didn't happen, but maybe at some point he'll let me do it. Yeah, I think that's a series in the waiting. I, um, when I, I kept them with me half that I was doing this, and when I said to people, I'm doing the, uh, the Lord of the Rings interview, in my head they were going to go, oh, you interview in the Hobbit, you're going to do this. First question for the first person I told was, but did he wear wigs? <laughs> I'm not joking. I am not joking. Well, the, it's there bigger is... than the Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to say that it's 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 not just that. They're the game they made up, the Tig game, and like there's at a certain point, 
people wanted to extend their experience of Lord of the Rings into the making of it and into like our friendships and and so it's it's you know that kind of stuff. And even though, was, even though I think the when will you wear wigs line is funny and you know kind of came out of left field and all that kind of stuff. My favorite line in that thing is. The dolphin is dead. <laughs> Dying in a car accident. Could you just you, you watch Elijah's face and he goes? Fucking <laughs> talking <laughs> And I think that perfectly encapsulates both your friendship, your brotherhood, and the, and the whole making of the film. And it's a perfect place. It is. Thank you very much to put yeah, a pin in this panel. panel. But you should be clear with them. The, the dolphin did not die in a car accident. <laughs> And unfortunately, that is where we do have to end it. Liverpool, thank you so much. Please give it up for me. Thank you. You were very good in that picture. I just want to say thank you. <laughs>